All right, what's going on, everyone? I am back with a problem in mechanics of materials dealing with axial deformation of a statically indeterminate, or axial deformation problem that's statically indeterminate. And, um, and what we're going to do here is, is take a really popular problem. You have a, a, like a, an axial member or some member, structural member that's fixed on both ends at A and C. You're given some material properties. Sometimes you're not. You don't, sometimes you really you don't need those, but we're going to see that in a little bit. Okay? And it was fixed at two ends. You have a loading here. And, and, we're gonna, and what you have to do is try to find the reactions, the horizontal forces or the reactions at A and C here. And, uh, and this time, what we're going to do is use the method of superposition. So sometimes you've probably done this by, by looking at, uh, you know, by just trying to come up with a compatibility relationship straight away. But here, we're going to use method of superposition, or what sometimes is called the force method. Force method of structural analysis. And usually in mechanics, this is like your first introduction. Anyways, what we're going to do here, I'm going to break this down real simple for you, is uh, draw the reactions. Uh, identify the number of redundant forces and remove them, and then draw this loading and redundant diagram, what, what I call the loading and redundant diagram. I think they're they're used popular. That's a popular term, and then come up with what the compatibility relationship this way, which is going to be the uh, the equation that we need in the statically indeterminate problem, and then solve. Okay, so here we've got again this this uh, uh, this structure here A B C. Um, it's got loaded. It's loaded at 50 kips. Loaded at point B with 50 kips. It's an external load. Okay, it's an external load. It's not internal. It's external at that point B. All right. And then the length of the total length of my structural member is 100 inches and 25 inches is from, from the left is where point B is. All right. So the first thing I'm going to do is draw the reactions. Reactions here. I have A X and C X. Uh, because I don't have any transverse loading, I have there's no really I don't need to worry about any kind of moment that would be here or a shear. Okay, and what we would do is find out that these would be going to zero anyway. And same thing with the other side. And really all the all that really matters is the horizontal reaction AX and CX. Okay. So we've drawn these reactions. And and we have to figure out what, what is this redundant force or or how many redundant forces we have, okay? So by, by looking at only this AX and CX here, and, and really only being able to look in the horizontal, the number of equilibrium equations I have here, the number of equilibrium equations I have to me are one. Okay, I only have one equilibrium equation, and that's sum of the forces in the horizontal, or in the X in this case, okay, we can call X positive to the right. This is the only equilibrium equation I have, okay, number of equilibrium equations. But the number of unknowns, number of unknowns okay number of unknowns are two two unknowns I have two unknowns one equilibrium equation this means I am statically indeterminate to the first degree the first degree okay so I, I have an insufficient number of equations I need one more equation and that other equation typically is called the compatibility equation. Okay, it's a relationship that that kind of relates deformations. Now, in order for me to do this using the method of superposition, what I want to do is remove. I want to say, what if I, I what? How many forces do I have to remove to make this thing statically determinate? And that in this in this case, because I have only one equilibrium equation, I have to get it down to one unknown. So if I remove one reaction, let's say CX here, then it would be statically indeterminate. So what I can do by method of superposition is say, hey, let me say this, this whole thing right here is equal to, equal to, I'm going to draw it one time here, this right here with, by removing C sub X right here, I remove C sub X. So essentially I have a, what looks like a cantilever, right? But this, with only axial loading, plus... Here, this other structure, this exact same looking deal with, with, with C sub X added on right here as a redundant, okay? So here, this was, 
this at here I just have to remember this would be I have to make sure when I remove this I just include my loading which is 50 kits that's a 50 50 kits here and this is called my loading diagram this is this is my loading and, and redundant diagrams this is my loading diagram loading diagram this is my loading diagram and this is my redundant diagram this is my redundant if I had if I was statically indeterminate to the second degree I'd have another redundant diagram if you will redundant diagram here okay each of these two diagrams is statically determinate and if I add these two up what I'm saying is that oh this is going to be you know it's going to result in my total structure with the two ends fixed and my 50 kip load so this is what I've, done. I've separated it, and, I, and it's nice because each of these is statically determinate. I just have to analyze each one at a time, and I, I'll be able to, you know, solve this problem. All right. So here I have here this uh, um, this is 25 inches, and this is 100 inches. And the thing I want to relate here is that okay, I know that point C in terms of deformation, point C should not move. So the total deformation at point C should equal zero. So I need to come up with a compatibility relationship for that. If I apply a 50 kip load here, I know that I'm going to have some deformation here. Okay. And I will call this with my loading diagram, I'm going to call this deformation delta C zero. And then with this load right here, right here, I'm going to have some deformation right here. And I'm going to call that delta C one. Okay, so my redundant, my first redundant, and my only redundant, but here, and that the, so my compatibility relationship, my compatibility relationship is that here I have delta C, which is equal to zero, I have no deformation at point C, is equal to delta C zero plus delta C one, okay? Delta C zero equals delta, plus delta C one, which is great. OK, one thing to note here is since I one thing to make sure you stay consistent with is if you draw your reactions here as going to the right, OK, AX and CX going to the right, you also want to make sure your redundant also goes to the right. You don't want to suddenly um, swap. All right. That's going to mess things up. You're going to get a negative sign that you don't need. It's just going to cause problems. And you're going to be like, why is my answer different than what it's supposed to be? All right. So here. You've got this right here, and each of these are pretty easy to, to solve for. So, for instance, delta C is zero, delta C is zero, the deformation here, you know, I, it's the sum of the deformation in this region right here plus this region right here. The, if I make a cut here, the internal force here, N, um, let's see, blah, 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 N, I think NBC, NBC, I'll call this zero equals zero. There's nothing here. And if I do an inter a cut here and I look at the internal force in this region, I'll get NAB equals 50 kips in tension. So if you do a little free body diagram, you make that cut, you'll find that you have a 50 kip tension there. And then if I make a cut at any point here, I will find that NAC for the entire length, I'll call this NAC1, is equal to CX. And it's positive CX because it's in tension. Okay, this thing, the way that I've drawn this, okay, so this would be, these are all my internal forces going on. Delta C0 is equal to NAB LAB over EAAB, that cross-sectional area of AB, plus NBC LBC over EABC. So it's, this is that summation of for axial deformations. Okay, so you, you, you have to have some understanding of this already to, to have this video making sense. And this is zero here. So obviously this whole term goes to zero, which is, is not unnecessary. And then here for delta C1, because I have only you know one internal force, no changes going on, no loading in between, I have here N A C1 L A C over E A A C, okay, which is this is because N A C1 is C X, L A C over E A A C right here, okay. And now I, I plug these back into my compatibility relationship right here so that I have delta C, which is equal to zero. The deformation of C is zero at this reaction or where I have this, right? And here I have uh, uh, NAB, LAB over EAAB 
plus CX LAC over EA AAC. Okay, right here. And, and thankfully, EA, the, the cross section of, of this entire rod or this element is uniform. It's three inches squared. Or, you know what? We don't even need that number because it's equal to zero. And we just we multiply this whole thing through by EA and it's zero. Okay. And what we end up with is that CX is equal to minus NAB LAB over LAC. Okay. And just make sure I did that right. Double check for me. Who knows? I could be wrong right here. And I know that NAB is equal to 50 kips in tension minus negative 50 kips. Okay. Negative 50 kips times that, that LAB, which was 25 inches divided by LAC, which is 100 inches. And that tells me that CX is equal to minus 12.5 kips. The negative tells me that CX is 12.5 kips pointing to the left, all right? CX is 12.5 kips pointing to the left right here. And now if I wanted to find AX, all I have to do is sum of the forces in the X equals zero, go this way to the right. I would have AX plus, I'm just gonna, you know, I, I don't want to confuse things here. I'm just going to make my equilibrium equation look like this drawing right here, okay? I want my equation to reflect this drawing up here, right here. So I have essentially AX plus CX plus 50 kips equals zero. And then, because I know that it's negative 12.5 or opposite of that right here, I'm going to put this AX minus 12.5 kips plus 50 kips equals zero, and that tells me that AX equals negative 37.5 kips, which means it's 37.5 kips to the left, okay? And those are my reactions, so that means I'd have to, if I want to draw this accurately, I'd have to, you know, I'd either have to write this in as negative 37.5 kips with this arrow going that way, okay, minus 12.5 kips that way, or draw it with a positive number and the arrow pointing in the correct direction. All right, but you know, those are our minor details. The, the key is that, you know, when you choose, how do you know that this displacement is zero? You've chosen a reaction, right? You've chosen this reaction. So the reactions don't move unless there's something, you know, like ground settlement or something much more advanced going on that you're not really aware of, okay? But these, these reaction points don't move for us in, in, our, in our mechanics problems. And so you can trust that that deformation is zero. All right, so let me know if you have any questions. Hope this helps. Take it easy.